Joseph will be taken up this weekend for Teresa Shelter, a program of opening doors that provides a safe place for all women and children who find themselves homeless due to circumstances beyond their control. Some women may have been evicted and are struggling with mental health and or substance abuse issues. Our entrance hymn is number 729, To Jesus Christ Our Sovereign King, number 729. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. The Feast of Christ the King, as we end our liturgical year, and soon to begin Advent. We now ask for God's mercy, God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God. And to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, as Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us praise God in song. Oh, 
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may increasingly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things 
and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out. If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now, one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly. For the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Several years ago, divers located a 400-year-old sunken ship off the coast of Northern Ireland. It is believed it was part of a Spanish fleet that was on a course to um, invade Great Britain. Scores of ships were sunk, the northern part of Ireland. And among the treasures found in that ship was a man's wedding ring. And when they cleared it up and cleaned it, etched on the wide band was a hand holding a heart. Guys, do you have hands holding hearts on your wedding bands? And then the words underneath read, I have nothing more to give you. Nothing more. You know, those could have been the words placed on the cross above Jesus at Calvary. On the cross, Jesus gave everything. He gave his love. He gave his life. He gave his all. All that one person could give for another. St. Paul says, 
there's no greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. He did it, literally. That's why we celebrate this feast of Christ the King. The end of our liturgical year. Christ is our King. You know, Jesus Christ is not only the King of the Jews, that's what Pilate put on the cross, but he's also the King of Kings. And there are two reasons why he is the King of Kings. Because of who he is, because of what he did. I'd like us to look at those two reasons. Because of who he is. You know, people call gold the king of metals. It's considered one of the most precious metals. People call the lion, what? The king of beasts. Because it's considered one of the noblest animals. Music people in the 30s and 40s, most of you are not going to get this. Um, Benny Goodman was the king of swing. What does that mean? Phyllis knows what the king of swing was. <laughs> and maybe some of you remember Elvis as the king of rock and roll, or Michael Jackson as the king of pop. We use that term, king, to designate the best the best of a certain area. We call Jesus the king of the human race, the best and noblest human being who ever lived. St. Paul says in our second reading, Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Jesus is the king of kings because of who he is. And the second reason we celebrate this feast is because he is the king of what he did, for what he did. And what did he do? He gave us everything. He died for us. He redeemed us. He united humanity with God. <clears throat> I think I shared this story with maybe the school children, I'm not sure. And if you've heard it before, you'll understand. In April of 1865, <clears throat> the slain body of Abraham Lincoln lay in state for hours in certain cities as the body traveled from Washington, D.C. to its final resting place in, in Springfield, Illinois. In Cleveland, Ohio, one of the long lines of hundreds of people filed by the dead president's body, a black woman, and her little son waited for hours to see the casket and this man. And when they got in front of the casket, the mother held up her son and she said to him, Honey, take a long look. This man died for you. This man died for us, the King of Kings. What he did, he redeemed us, united us with God. But there is one caveat, one condition, one area of salvation that we have to understand. And it has to do with the dialogue and the gospel between the three people on Calvary, Christ and the two criminals. And we need to listen carefully to what the words are. You know, there's a popular thought, maybe it's the New Age, maybe it's lukewarm religion, where people think, well, Jesus is my friend. He's going to allow me anything. If at the end something's not, he's going to let me go into heaven. That's a huge misconception. You know, we just have to listen to the words of Jesus. Forgiveness an entrance into the kingdom, did come to both of those hanging next to him. It only came to one. One who what? Who recognized Christ and sought Christ. You know, we cannot take salvation for granted. We can't say this is just going to be, well, it ain't. 
The cross was not a joy ride for Christ. His suffering won us salvation. He is our king. I'd like to close with a prayer. Lord Jesus, it's not enough for us to look at you carrying your cross or to proclaim you our king. It's not enough for us to bow our heads and call you Lord of Lords. It's not enough for us to praise you on this feast day. We must pick up our cross and follow you. We must follow you every day. We must follow you even though that cross can be very heavy because it's your will. And if we do what you say to us, before we die, you will say, as you said to the good thief, before he died. Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, his worship. he has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We raise our prayers and our petitions. We ask God to hear us. For the church, the body of Christ, that it be a leaven of hope for all in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that all who govern tend for the first to the needs of the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Harper Lois Keeter, who is who is being baptized this weekend. Let us pray to the Lord. <coughs> Lord, hear our prayer. As the Jubilee Year of Mercy concludes this weekend, <coughs> may we remain steadfast in showing God's mercy as we remain under the merciful reign of Christ the King. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the candidates and the team at the Men's CEW this weekend in Sugar Creek, <coughs> let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those with terminal illnesses, that their, nearest, that their nearness to God bring them healing and hope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In remembrance of Cletus and Mildred Huff's anniversary, and for those who remember in this Mass who have died, John Bertho, Colin Jackson, Donald Sieverding and Roger Teeth, that they may know the fulfillment of God's promise of eternal life and everlasting joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God the Father, hear our prayer. Hear us, God the Son. 
Let us make an offering. The song for the preparation of the gifts is number 333, Behold to the Lamb, number 333. <laughs> now, my brothers and sisters, that my gifts and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the of this holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, <clears throat> we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you appointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross, as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, 
we might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption. For he is truly our king, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice and love. So with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, we sing the hymn of your glory as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, he blessed it and broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Spread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop. We pray for our brothers and sisters who have died. Bring them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Song for communion is number 578, Worthy is the Lamb, number 578.
Let us pray together the Novena, St. John Bosco. In need of special help, I appeal with confidence to you, St. John Bosco, for I require not only spiritual graces, but also temporal ones, and particularly the future planning of our parishes. May you, who on earth <clears throat> devotion to Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament, and to Mary, help of Christians, and who always had compassion for those who were suffering, obtain from Jesus and his Heavenly Mother the grace I now request, and also a sincere resignation to the will of God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Having received the food of immorality, we ask you, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ the King, we may live with him eternally. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thanksgiving choir practice for St. Joseph's 9 a.m. Thanksgiving Mass will be Tuesday, November 22nd at 6.30 p.m. in St. Joseph's Church. The ecumenical service is tonight at 6.30 at the Presbyterian Church, and Deacon Robert is the homilist. Our closing hymn is number 407, In Christ Alone, number 407. <laughs> Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of Stop.